Okay, so let's just jump into it. The one project that I have in mind that I had saved for this video was um, I want to make a fuzzy little pillow. So basically, for Christmas, I, uh, among other things, knitting, crochet, I also was gifted a really beautiful frame loop. I thought, how nice would it be to weave some pillowcases for the living room? You know, we have pretty, it's pretty bright in here. You can kind of see the, uh, let's call it, I don't know, mustard, ochre, whatever countertops. There's a lot of like primary colors in different, like the yellow and blue curtains, the red pot, you can see that painting in the back. So there's some really bright colors. I thought it'd be very nice to create a couple cushions that were also in like this brilliant red, right? It's a nice color. So I picked up a couple different yarns from the center of Paris. Here they are. Um, they're all in a different variation of red. And they're all kind of, I can see them coupling together quite nicely. Except for this one strange choice that I made. I don't know why I got this. And the thing is, upon closer inspection, it really doesn't go with the other ones. These guys have more of like a magenta, they have more like a blue undertone. And even though this one is a pretty, no, it still has a little bit. It's still a little cooler, you know? This one's a uh, hot. Oh, this one's got, um, it's in its own category. So, mmm. I thought maybe this would be better as a knitted pillowcase and these, which have a little more texture and weight and they're a bit more interesting. Well, they're all kind of interesting. I thought these ones would look a little bit better as a woven project, yeah? And this thing might be better on its own. So the brand is La Bergère de France. And um, they're interesting. They're sort of, I mean, I don't know them that well, but I tell you that they're at uh, BHV. That seems to be like their, I guess they have like a pop-up shop boutique with just these guys. And I'm not sure what other brands, but it's sort of like, to me, it's giving like fashion yarn. You've got sort of, I mean, I have some organic cotton, 100% cotton from them as well, but they seem to have a lot of interesting blended yarns or weird textures and um, yeah, effects, let's say. Basically the sweater vest I'm working on and a, oh yeah, the shrunken sweater was like a baby alpaca blend, but it's got a little bit of, how do you say it? Polyamide, 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 like um, a synthetic and it's got sparkles in it. It's got glitter, like glittery pieces woven through it. So it's got, again, it's like a little bit of interest, a little bit of intrigue. In regards to this little pillowcase, this is what I've done. I went and purchased an insert, got it from Monoprix. I think it was like $5.99 or something. Oh, it's right here. I have this. My idea then is to knit basically two big squares out of this red stuff and then stitch them together. I'm still trying to decide whether or not I want to install a zipper, but I am leaning towards no because of the sheer amount of work that's going to take and not really being sure how it's going to turn out. So here's our lovely fuzzy yarn. And if you look on the back side of the label, you'll see a little chart indicating the needle size that is recommended for use. Finer yarns generally need a thinner needle, chunkier yarn, something a little bit bigger. I decided that since this yarn was likely going to have quite a fuzzy halo that I should try a size 7 needle. That it was okay if the knit was a little bit looser. This was my first mistake. I attached the needles to the only free cord I have, which is 120 centimeters. Um, my other cords are tied up with other projects right now. But the length of this doesn't really matter. It's not too important in this case because I'm knitting this project back and forth not in the round. The insert that I picked up at Monoprix said 45 by 45 centimeters on its tag, but notice the shape of the insert. 
When I measured it, because of the bulk in the middle, it was more like 48 centimeters. So I thought I should add a couple of centimeters to my knitted piece so the final result wouldn't be too tight. Once I got a little farther along, I realized this might have been a mistake because the knit has a little bit of give. It stretches out a bit. It's not quite like other woven fabrics. Sometimes I think I'm a bit of a sucker for punishment. Um, probably could have found a pattern, calculated how many stitches to cast on, but no, I decided to just wing it. I started with a German twist cast on and cast on about 110 stitches, which was way too many, way too many. This is also about the time that I realized the seven millimeter needles were not going to cut it and that the white polyester of my pillow insert was going to shine through the holes. So I started over, this time with five millimeter needles and about 75 stitches cast on. So let's see how this goes. So we are officially at the halfway mark. We have a fuzzy red square. I feel like this is gonna work really well. The next step is to simply do the same thing and repeat. It's to make the second half. The thought then is to take the two pieces line them up edge to edge, and then using this yarn, stitch, stitch it together. So along three sides to make sort of like a sack, stuff the insert inside, and then simply stitch it closed. And voila, there you have it, fuzzy pillow. So this is all I have left from that first skein, which is definitely not enough to make the second half. In fact, I think I'll save this to, to stitch the sides together. I went to Beyashve in search of another one, with no luck. So I had to order it online, but we can still enjoy a little Paris montage. Hit it. Welcome to another very great day in Paris. Um, it's a few years, a few years. I'm so tired. It's a few days later and I slept terribly last night. Well, actually that's not true. I slept very well, but I had this dream this morning that kind of woke me up at about 5 a.m. So, <sighs> brutal. Anyways, the, uh, the fuzzy has arrived in the mail so we can continue working on this project. I estimate about another mm, five days or so to get the second piece finished. I'm trying to be realistic with work, right? Um, and then those two pieces can be stitched together and we'll have our final product. Now today, I'm going to be meeting with a friend in the center of Paris at a place called Café de la Nouvelle Marie, uh, close to Pantheon. So we're actually going to be knitting in the wild today which is gonna be fun. This stupid thing, let me tell you, if you are doing projects, if you are making things and you're estimating the amount of wool you need, do yourself a favor and order an extra order. Buy, purchase an extra skein or two because this has happened twice now that I've been like one skein short and I've had to order it and this shit is expensive. <laughs> This has been a little bit pricier than I was hoping. I bought the first one like 50% off, thinking, oh, that should do me, right? No, no. This thing was probably, it worked out to be about three times the cost of the first skein. So, lesson learned. It's better to have more yarn than you need than too little to finish your project. We're just gonna cast on the second half here and then into Paris we go. All right, just 
just gotta find that string. Oh, there it is. It's in the butt. Okay, <laughs> found it. We can uh, we can get started now. So it's three days later and we now have two separate knit squares, which means we're ready to stitch this together and finish the project. I gave myself five days to complete this because I said I wanted to be realistic about time, but the second piece actually came together pretty quickly. I think I got half of it done. I did one solid, pretty solid day of knitting. I'm not super fast. And, um, and then I finished the rest this morning. I mean, it's now mid-afternoon, mind you, but two days, two days to do the actual work. So we're going to go ahead and attach those two pieces, make our little pouch, and finish, finish this pillow up. First piece would be this one. That's the first one. It's a little, it, it kind of, I should have cast on a few more stitches to be completely honest. And then the second one, I did cast on a few more stitches, but uh, it's a little bit shorter and wider. So, can you see that? Yeah. So what we're going to do, I think I might line them up like this. We'll start on the side edge. Yeah, I'll just start it from the bottom corner. I think that does make sense. All right, two out of three. Looks pretty good. Pretty good. So we just have to do the last side and slip this, turn it inside out, put the insert inside, and then stitch the top. Whee! So exciting that I put my hair up for this one. Okay, the three sides have been stitched, so we now have we now have it. We can we can take it, flip it inside out. There it is. Hope that works. Hopefully this looks okay. We'll see. We'll see. Okay, now's the fun part. Now we need to <clears throat> put this on. Put this one on this. Ugh. Okay, okay. Good, good, good. Feed that into the corner. Feed that into the corner. Oh, look at it, it's so cute. And um, yeah, so you can see, ooh, it was a little bit short on that side, but it'll be fine. Cause we're going to just kind of stretch it and stitch it. So it should be pretty, pretty tight fit. Okay, so the last step, yeah, is to just stitch her up. Here we go. Okay, so the last little string here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I want it to be on the inside so I don't just have something hard, like a hard knot and something sticking out. So I'm going to feed it in like this. It's kind of funny. And then feed it down the side and then out. Little exit there. Like that. And then I'll just cut that and uh, push that back in. There we have it. Look at that. It's so cute. That's great. Oh, that turned out really nicely. There's our fuzzy pillow. 
Finished, complete, ready to be snuggled with. I'm so happy. You know what? Even with the, the, even with the knit, the stockinette going this direction and then this direction, it actually, it looks fine. It looks, uh, it, it looks all right. It doesn't, it doesn't seem to um, diminish the appearance of the pillow at all. So it's actually, it's quite sweet. It's quite nice. Cool. So there you have it. I guess we can show this thing styled around the apartment now, right? Right. <laughs> I love it. So thanks for sticking around and seeing this funny little project of mine through to completion. I hope you enjoyed seeing how this thing was made from start to finish. And uh, yeah, I'll see you, I'll see you really soon in the next video. Bye.